please, please make it stop. Echoed the cries of real watch enthusiasts across the globe. Once again, 18 months on from the moon swatch craze, the Swatch Group tease us with another irresistible plastic watch, shrouded in a nuclear storm of hype. Manufactured hype, false hype, hype created to invade and dominate social media, inciting those PlayStation and Prime energy drink flipping cult of bottom feeders to get out of bed, throw their grey joggers on and go and camp overnight for a brand they've never heard of. To those inspired real enthusiasts amongst us, I know it is tempting, but I beg of you, do not throw away your Saturday morning in vain. You won't get one. And here's why. Hi guys, I'm Vinny. Welcome back to the channel. Please do subscribe down below if you haven't done as yet. So here we are, yet another Swatch collaboration, 18 months on from the Moon Swatch craze. And this time it is a collaboration with another Swatch group sister company, Blanc Pan. Now, all of us enthusiasts have, of course, heard of Blanc Pan and Blanc Pan the 50 Fathoms. There is a incredible history behind the brand. And as one of the oldest watchmakers in the world, quite rightly so, it deserves our respect. However, this is a brand that is absolutely could not be further away from the hype bandwagon of your average Rolexes, Omegas and Tudors. The vast majority of normal people will never have even heard of Blanc Pan. So why am I here on this channel informing you all to not even bother queuing up for these watches tomorrow morning? Because you would assume that, well, if not everybody's heard of Blanc Pan. No one will be interested in it. There shouldn't be anywhere near the amount of hype around this than there was with the Omega Moon Swatch launch. Now, how can I be so sure that it will be nigh and impossible for you to pick one of these up on the launch day? Let's say you're lucky enough to be close to one of the very few stores across the globe that are offering these watches. I'm sure of it because, guys, I've been through it myself. I've been one of those mugs that have queued up for the Moon Swatch collaboration only two weeks ago. Now this was the uh, Moonshine Gold version of the Blue Neptune edition. Now my way of thinking with this, as it may be with many of you guys with this launch, well, it's been 18 months since the initial hype. If you walk into many swatch stores now across the world, there will be some moon swatches sitting on the shelf. Yes, they may not be the most desirable ones in the non white colored straps all of those are more sought after and and far less common but you can still pick them up so i thought to myself right it's offered at manchester trafford center that is a stone's throw away from me i don't mind queuing up for an hour if i get there an hour before the doors open i should surely be able to pick one of these up no one cares anymore it was a long time ago so i turned up before the launch which was 10 a.m and at 10 20 I was turned away and so were another 150 people there in the queue. Apparently they had ran out. They just came up to us and told us in the queue that there are none left. No apology, no explanation as to why. And of course I'm not stupid. Before I entered the queue, I asked two or three different people there who were manning the queue and at the swatch store, am I going to get one? Is there enough for the 150 people that are in this queue? Oh, absolutely, sir. Yes, there's plenty of them, more than enough. Just queue up and you should be able to get one. Should. I want to, as an enthusiast, I've wanted that Neptune colour for my own collection for quite a while. Uh, the association with Daniel Craig, of course, we all know about, but I really did believe that that hype should have died down enough by now for me to be able to get hold of one, especially if I'm there an hour earlier. And I said, well, hold on, nobody in this queue has got one, so who has got one? And apparently they'd opened the doors earlier than the advertised time. And I said to them, well, if you've opened the doors early, I could have judged the queue and looked at it seemingly stretching back to Birmingham and said, yeah, I, it's very unlikely I'm going to get one of those and walked away and not wasted an hour and 20 minutes of my time. But no, they opened the doors early because apparently it was raining in Manchester. Rain in Manchester, really? I said to him. So absolute shambles of management from Swatch there. But what I did realise is that we were there 
for the photo opportunity. We were there as free tools for Swatch to use, to photograph us, to put up on their social media, and to exacerbate this hype more and more, to accelerate the hype more and more for this eventual release. Do I expect this to be the same as the Moon Swatch launch in terms of demand? Absolutely, yes I do, because whilst the vast majority of people have never even heard of Blancpain, and before Amiga is widely known, a household name, Blancpain isn't. The launch of this watch has been done in such a way where it follows on from the Amiga Swatch collaboration, which means all of the guys who I mentioned at the top of the video, that sort of prime energy drink, PlayStation flipping cult that make a couple of hundred pounds here and there, they're not even watch dealers, they don't even know what, what the history behind the Moonwatch was. They just have heard of the brand Amiga, and now they will never have even heard of Blancpain, but just know it's tagged onto that. Know it follows on for that, so they will absolutely be in that queue. They will absolutely be the guys who get hold of these watches, the idiots that camp overnight to get them and make a few hundred quid on eBay. That's why I'm saying don't even bother, because at the Moonshine Gold Moon Swatch launch of the Neptune, there were guys there queuing up overnight. They camped out in the pouring rain of Manchester for a watch that was released over 18 months ago. So if that was the demand for that piece, then don't be stupid enough to think that the demand for this one will be any less. You're most likely to get one if you camp overnight. And quite frankly, if you camp overnight, then how sad are you really seriously download tinder get a life and uh, you know it, it's just it's just a plastic watch seriously guys for me i think this is a much better design a much better well thought out collaboration than what we saw before it seems to be a higher quality piece there is a mechanical uh, movement at the 350 pound price point I, I don't think it's too bad they've clearly listened to some of the feedback on the moon swatch launch where the vast majority of people can't stand the straps that they, the Velcro straps that they come on, it's widely accepted that those are naff. So I think the NATO strap will be much nicer, better quality, a better feel on the wrist. Well done to them for that. But that's really as far as I will go with talking about the design because there will be another 100 videos on YouTube by now talking about the 42 millimeter dimensions and that lovely laser ablation design that there is on the case backs there. And I'm sure you'll be saying, oh, I want the blue one or I'll choose out the beige one, Pacifica ocean whatever it's called and that's nice it's a nice sentiment but guys you absolutely will not have a choice you will not have a choice until at least six months down the line when there may be some of these available as you walk into a swatch store hey guys editing Vinny here i just wanted to interject to comment on these watches as investments. Now, when I was in the queue the other week talking to some lads there that had bought the full set of Amiga Moon Swatches, they'd kept them in uh, unwrapped condition, brand new, and they hoped that having invested thousands of pounds in collecting every single one of them over the course of the last 18 months, that in five, 10 years time, they would appreciate in value and they'd make themselves a nice, handsome profit. Now, my big issue with this is that I wanted to to really call out the difference between limited accessibility and limited supply. Now those moon swatches are still in production. They'll probably be in production for at least another couple of years. Who knows, it could run for five years. And that won't be any different with this Blancpain swatch uh, collaboration. So when a watch is an investment or is investable, there has to be a rarity or scarcity aspect about it. If you look on eBay even now, there are hundreds and hundreds of moon swatches available to buy, and that means, guys, that there's a lot of them out there. And for that reason, no, I don't believe they are investable. I don't think that they will appreciate any more than inflation over the next five years, and that absolutely will be the same case for these Blancpain watches as well. The same as very much the case with the Tudor Harrods watch. That was kind of a collaboration, one of the first that we really saw in the luxury watch industry. Accessibility for that was really difficult. There is only one store in the whole world that you can get your hands on a Tudor Harrods, and that is in Harrods in London. 
here we are, six years down the line since that was initially released. They're still producing it. There's well over 15,000 of them now out there, which means that is not a watch that trades anywhere near the retail price anymore. It was at first, it doesn't anymore. If you're heading down there, let me know. Let me know if you're one of the lucky few to pick one up because it is really sad that the real enthusiasts, and I could see in the queue of that Moonswatch launch that you just looked at the people there and they were mostly teenagers and joggers and with backpacks and, and caps and hoodies on and they just were not the usual typical people that I myself as a secondary market dealer do business with. They weren't, weren't the typical enthusiast or collector but dotted around you could, you could identify those guys in the queue who were there for a watch for themselves. Guys who were wearing Rolexes, guys in their 50s that were just enthusiasts that wanted one and I really felt sorry for those individuals who had waited 18 months. This was their opportunity and they didn't get one and they didn't get one with even so much as an apology because guys this is all about creating hype. So do you know what I'd go as far as to say ladies and gentlemen that you can join me in crowning the Swatch Group as the king in the number one spot with this imaginary crown I place on their heads. The king of hype, of gamesmanship, probably now even worse than Rolex with their authorised dealer waitlist. They have done it, well done to them, they've taken that top spot and I'm sure every year we will see more of these collaborations going on and yet more people pissed off because they can't get one. That's my rant for today over. Thanks very much. Go check out beatthewaitlist-watches.com and also our sister company Steadyframes at the link stadiumframes.com and I'll see you next week. Take care.